The US government says Julian Assange created a grave and imminent risk to agents overseas when his WikiLeaks website published classified US documents. They argue he went a considerable way beyond the role of a journalist in gathering information. Assange's supporters say he's a hero who's been persecuted for exposing US wrongdoing. I'm joined by his lawyer, Jennifer Robinson, to examine the case further. Thank you so much for being here, Jennifer. Are we witnessing, right before our eyes, the creation of a, a new crime, which is a publisher publishing the truth? Well, that's exactly what Julian Assange is being prosecuted for. We're seeing the... It's the first time in history the US is using the Espionage Act against a publisher. And even the New York Times and the Washington Post, mainstream media organisations, are saying this is criminalising public interest journalistic practices that we engage in all the time. So that's what he's being prosecuted for, journalism. Well, one of many things that leaps out right away is if he as a publisher is guilty of something by dint of having published, what about all of the mainstream publishers just in this country, the mainstream titles, who also published that information. Are they next in line for extradition? I think it's naive to think that this precedent won't be used against the rest of the media. Julian is being prosecuted for engaging in journalistic activity. We talk about the New York Times problem. You cannot distinguish between what Julian Assange does and what the rest of the media does. And when you've got a president like President Trump calling the media the enemy of the people, it's not enough to say that, well, he's something different to the mainstream media. This will apply to them. This, is, this, this indictment is absolutely criminalising journalism. Can you... Work within for us the extradition treaty, because as I understand it as a layperson, um, where there's the threat of death, you're not supposed to be extradited. And where it's on political motivation, you're not supposed to be extradited. That's right. And yet that feels like, to a layperson, what is happening to Julian Assange. That's exactly right. The US-UK treaty prohibits being extradited for, for a political offence. Espionage is a typical political offence. So the very basis for any extradition request from the United States prohibits the kind of request they've made. And so we say it's unlawful. He should not be extradited. The other very concerning aspect of this case is that the facts on the indictment as charged could, once he's extradited to the United States, form the basis of new charges that could attract the death penalty, aiding the enemy, for example, or conspiracy to aid the enemy, which is a, um, a provision under the Espionage Act. If he is so... F it, this, is, this should be prohibited. And we heard in court this week judges asking US ca counsel for the Home Secretary saying, well, if he's extradited, could he face the death penalty? They said yes. And he said, well, is there any protection against it? They said no. And so there has been no assurance from the United States protecting him against that potential exposure to the death penalty. And that is not permitted. Tonya, I said, you heard me say, they're making up the rules as they go along. Now, what Jennifer's saying there see, sounds just like that. You know, the, the, the standing treaty says you can't do this, you can't do that. They but say, well, extreme, we will. It's the extreme hypocrisy of it all as well. They're saying, um, when people are arguing against him, they say, well, he caused the death. He could have caused the death of people that were working with the American government, whatever. How many deaths did Biden cause when he pulled the soldiers out of Afghanistan and left all the people that were aiding the American government there then? How many deaths does he cause? Is he going to go to jail for the deaths that he caused? It's the hypocrisy of it all that is unbelievable. But the main thing is, is that Julian Assange has been in prison, is in prison now, for being a journalist, a proper, true journalist, which we know has died in the free world. So it, it's of the utmost importance that he does not... He needs to be freed now and without any charge at all because all he did was do his job properly as a journalist telling the truth. What is it... How is Julian Assange... I mean, I, I know it was reported that he wasn't fit to take part, not even by, you know, remote camera or whatever. Mm. This has been going on for such an unimaginably long part, portion of one man's life, this limbo... He's been under restrictions on his liberty since 2010. He's been, he was in the embassy for seven and a half years protecting himself against the risk of US extradition, which is exactly what happened the moment he was dragged out of there by British police. He was served with a US extradition request. And more than five years now in a high security prison. His health has deteriorated significantly over this time. And the accepted medical evidence in the British courts is that if he's extradited to the United States, the oppressive prison conditions he will face combined with his depressive illness, his autistic diagnosis, will cause his suicide. So when you hear his wife say this is a matter of life or death, if he's extradited, the prison conditions he could face could, could result in his death. And so when you're sitting in Belmarsh Prison, in isolation as he is, staring down the prospect of extradition to those conditions, 
it has a serious toll on your mental and physical health. And where are we now as a, as a Western culture with rule of law, with notions like habeas corpus, you know, the idea that you are not to be destroyed or, or in any way ruined or, or stripped of your life and property until you've faced a jury of your peers and cruel, unusual punishments and prohibitions against those. And yet as a civilization, we're watching in real time round the clock that very thing happening to one publisher. That's all he is. He's a publisher. He's a publisher who's won journalism awards the world over and been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for the very same publications for which the US want to put him in prison for the rest of his life face 175 years in prison. But it's not just the breakdown, it's the breakdown of the rule of law. We ran a number of abusive process arguments in this case. So I have been spied on. The rest of Julian's legal team has been spied on. Legally privileged material has been seized. His medical appointments have been spied on. The CIA plotted to kidnap and kill him. You can't make up what has happened in this case, and yet it continues. We saw earlier Espionage Act prosecutions under the Nixon administration thrown out for far less abusive process than this, and yet in this era, under a Biden administration, this prosecution continues despite these incredible incursions on civil liberties and indeed legal privilege. Tonya, what does this say to you about our blessed British judicial system? It, it, what faith do you have? None at all. And look at look at our system, and look at what we're saying about Russia at the moment. Are we not exactly the same now? Then, if some, you know, somebody's di- he, if he gets extradited, and even if he doesn't, he's in Belmarsh, top security prison, just for being a journalist. It's unbelievable that this is happening in today's age. I mean, I don't understand why people aren't protesting more. I don't understand why the media isn't protesting more. This is. We have, what's happened to our soul? What's happened to the fact that what's right must be right? What's going on in the world? 